Prepare yourselves for the most adorable, cozy, springy little cottage. I built this granny flat on a 20 by 15 lot in Newcrest, which is like the smallest lot size possible. Typically, I avoid lot sizes this small because I like my Sims houses large and in charge, but I was inspired by the concept of a spring cottage in full bloom and was imagining an elder or retired Sim would live there. I knew I wanted the main house to be L-shaped with a backyard covered patio slash dining area. I also wanted a covered wraparound porch in the front. Right now, it just looks like a bunch of boxes, but as I start to delete walls and add fences, you'll see the shape of the house come together. For this style of house, I knew I was going to have a hard time with the roof pieces because it requires several different pieces. Roofing is just one big Tetris game and it stresses me out. So instead of jumping into roofing straight away, I decided to switch to figuring out the floor plan first while I worked up my courage to roof this house. Think of this rough floor plan as a sketch of the interior. In order to figure out where the windows are going to go, I need to know where the TV, kitchen appliances, and bed frame will be. These are the main furniture pieces I like to work around because I prefer when my TVs are mounted and centered on a wall and the kitchen appliances don't go up against a window. This is just my personal preference when building The Sims 4. I'm using these windows from Pierre Sims Auntie Vera's bathroom set, which come in clear and colored glass versions with many different sizes. I kept it pretty uniform and only added a stained glass window in the bathroom. I'm pulling a lot of furniture from my catalog that has a rustic, aged, or floral feel, so I use a lot of custom content items from Pierre Sims, Domaine du Claw, Woodland Ranch, Auntie Vera's bathroom, and Hey Harry's Coastal Collection. I'll do my best to point out a lot of the CC I use as well as link it in the description, but as always, if you ever have any questions about where you can find an item, just leave a comment and I will get back to you. This build mostly features custom content, but I hope that even if you don't use custom content that you still find this video inspirational at the very least. But back to what I'm doing on screen, I was struggling with how I wanted this living room to look. I've been wanting to do a build incorporating Piri Sims combo set because it features a ton of these slanted pillars with built-in shelves and whatnot. It's actually intended to make a faux attic space, but I thought I could make it work in the living room. However, I did not in fact make it work. The living room was just a tad too narrow for those pillars. I do keep one of the reading nook benches tucked next to the fireplace and then move this recliner chair from Joyce's Fox into the other corner by the fireplace. I change the swatch on this recliner a million times and finally settle on a worn brown leather. I added some French doors from Hey Harry's Coastal Collection leading from the back patio to the bedroom. I missed this earlier, but the flooring is new from part 3 of Hey Harry's Clean Collection. I also just downloaded parts 2 and 3 of Felix Andre's Soho Collection, which would have been perfect for my industrial build I just posted, but I guess I'll just have to build another apartment once the entire collection is out and available for download. Now that I've got the general layout down, I'm going back to the exterior. Before I tackle the roofing, I add columns and spandrels around the porch and back patio. I also do a trim around the house, originally going with this blue one, but once I do the roofing, I decide it's just too ornate and switch it out for a simple white trim. Columns, spandrels, and trim are simple ways to elevate the exterior of your build, but it does take some practice. I also add shutters and flower boxes to each of the windows. The shutters are from Pierre Sims Domaine du Claw set and the flower boxes are from Hey Harry's Coastal Collection. I made my own trellis for the patio and I'll show you how to do that in a second, but basically using the lowest lying fence in the base game, I think it's called Smooth Keeper, I drew a box where I wanted the perimeter of the pergola to be. Then I drew more diagonal lines and deleted the floor pieces in between the lines of fencing. You can also raise up some shrubbery like the low lying flowers to make it look like plants and vines are growing along the top of the pergola and to add some shade, but I decided not to because I wanted all that sunlight. The lighting on this particular lot isn't the best in game, so I wanted to take advantage of as much natural light as I could get. And now we're doing the dreaded roofing. <laughs> I think another thing that often frustrates me about roofing in this game is that it's such a crucial step in defining how your build is going to look, but in real life, roofing on houses isn't that big of a deal because we can rarely see it. Like, we're always on the ground level looking at houses, so the actual shape of the roof doesn't contribute much to the house. Unless it's like a historical home, like a Victorian or mid-century modern. I see so many suburban homes with just like two gabled roof pieces and that's it. But if I were to do that in The Sims, it would look so lame. After doing this house, I'm starting to realize that roofing just takes a lot of patience. It's actually the part of building in The Sims 4 that scared me the most because I actually first started playing The Sims Free Play on my iPad before The Sims 4, and that was my introduction to my love for building. 
In The Sims Freeplay, it automatically roofs the houses for you when you build a room, which is super easy because you don't have to think about how all these rooms are going to be connected by the roofing. But it's also limiting in that you can't pull the eaves out or do different roofing styles to reference a certain time period or architectural style. I'm slowly starting to figure out roofing in this game and what styles work best for me, and it just takes practice. Once I get the roofing pieces on there, I adjust the height of everything because I don't like when the roof pieces are super tall. I feel like it just makes the house look really unproportional. Here is where I switch the trim, and for the exterior wallpaper, I use some blue shingles on the gabled roof pieces and mix this creamy white Tudor brick with a plain white plaster so the exterior wouldn't clash with all the flowers I knew I was going to add out here from Debug. I replace the base game fence on the wraparound porch with these wooden vertical slats from Hey Harry's Coastal Collection, some of my favorite custom content furniture in my catalog. I knew I wanted to raise the house up on a slight foundation, but before I do that, I pull up my debug and live edit menus so I can pull all the flowers and landscaping items I want to use, and I just learned about this and want to share it with you all even though I don't do it in this video. But did you know that instead of scrolling through debug searching for the items you want, you can just search for it in the Sims gallery and it'll pop up in a little room. This only works though if you have extra space on your lot to place a whole room and in this case I did not. This little cottage stretches nearly to the boundaries of this lot on all four sides. So to add a fence around the front and side yard I had to look in debug because the game won't let you build fences or walls too close to the edge of any given lot. I found a short cast iron fence that came in white which I used to fence in the property a bit and make the landscaping seem more intentional. And I grabbed anything that looked cottagey or floral in debug like tons of low lying vines, wildflowers, and lavender. I don't know about you guys but in Los Angeles where I live we do not have many seasons. It's basically warm, hot, or extremely hot. Lately, we've been getting more rain than usual, but no matter how much rain we get, we do not have the gorgeous perennial flowers that other states do. And without snowy winters, spring doesn't have the same feeling. I went to college in the Midwest where there is a lot of weather, and I honestly loved having four seasons. It's something I still really miss. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot to love about it being warm and sunny all the time. But because of that, we don't get to experience the stereotypical spring and fall seasons. Anyways, back to the build. Once I get all the flowers and bushes and things sorted how I like, I can raise the house up on the foundation. The reason I did all the landscaping before I added the foundation was so I could scoot the flowers and vines up as close as I wanted to the house without them clipping to the level of the flooring. Also, when you landscape like this, you don't need to worry about plants clipping through the walls into the house because they will just clip into the foundation, which you can't see anyway. I was tempted to use my favorite stone steps from Felix Andre's Chateau set, but opted for some base game white stairs instead to limit the number of CC packs I'm pulling from in case you'd like to download this build, but maybe don't have all the same custom content that I do. And I'm so proud of myself because I remembered to add a trash can, both indoors and outdoors, and a mailbox. Basic necessities for your sims that I always forget in my builds. I did, however, forget to add a fire alarm and fire extinguisher. Ugh, can't have it all, I guess. For the foundation, I used a beige brick from Hey Harry and Felix Andre's Organic set. In the patio area, I used a stone flooring with the little purple flowers from Joyce's Fox, but if you have the Cottage Living EP, there's flooring that's the exact same pattern. And now we are finally returning to the interior. This entire build took me probably three hours to do over the span of two days. I easily could have done it in one day if I had three consecutive hours in one day to just play The Sims, but I'm glad I didn't. Often when I'm building, I'm making it up on the fly and imagining the types of sims that might live here, like who am I creating this place for? Or I try to decorate around a certain color or aesthetic, but I never have a clear idea of what I want it to end up looking like. But if I sleep on the idea and think about it throughout the day while I'm doing different things, then I get more comfortable with the direction I'm going in. I usually write down these different ideas I have for builds in the notes app on my phone so I don't forget when I sit back down to build. So it's at this point in the video that I'm returning to the build on day two to finalize everything and I had a much clearer image of what I wanted it to look like. The first part of this was figuring out the placements and shapes and now I'm deciding the color palettes, aesthetic, and textures. I also knew I wanted to play around with Peary Sims Pantry Party Set since it's available for free download now and I love, 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 love a good kitchen clutter set. 
I used the pantry party wooden shelves as a bookcase in the living room and then made a gallery wall by resizing different framed photos and posters. I figured an elder sim would have a lot of photos and memories from their life, so they'd need a gallery wall like this to display it all. Gallery walls are some of my favorite things to do in the game and in real life. It takes a lot of measuring, but I think it's so fun trying to strike the perfect balance of frames and colors and objects. I wanted this granny flat to feel very cozy and lived in, so I go wild with the clutter and furnishings. Just wait until you see the kitchen. It's still functional, but there are boxes of cereal and pots and pans, fresh produce and cooking utensils all over the counters and open shelving. I still struggle a little with the living area here. I was attached to the fireplace and refused to get rid of it because it feels like such a cozy part of the house. And the sim living here would love to sit in their brown leather recliner they've had for ages, kick their feet up, and read a book by the fire any time of day. But the fireplace from Piri Sims Domaine du Claw is so deep, like the mantle is huge. I felt like it needed a lot of clutter on the mantle, so I originally furnished it with books and vases and knickknacks, but get rid of that. I think once I furnished the bookshelf, I realized it made the area feel very cluttered because they're just open, you can see everything on the shelves, so I didn't need all the extra stuff on the fireplace. I added some frilly floral pillows to the recliner and love seat from Joyce's Fox. I don't think I've ever used those pillows before, but they really came in handy here. And you see the area between the kitchen island and the love seat? It's an awkward amount of space because technically I could squeeze a two-seater dining table there with plenty of room for your sims to walk around it, but it didn't feel right. Plus, there's a four-seater dining table right through the sliding glass doors on the patio. So instead, I added a little buffet side table from Hey Harry's Coastal Collection, which is actually supposed to be a bathroom vanity. The side table adds a separation between the living room and kitchen that I was looking for and designates that area between the two spaces as a walkway. Moving on to the kitchen, I pull furnishings from so many different sets. I believe the fridge is from Hey Harry and Felix Andre's basic collection. The oven and stove are from Hey Harry's coastal collection, and the sink is from, oh gosh, I wanna say Pierre Sims Woodland Ranch. That's just off the top of my head. I'm usually pretty good at looking at an object and knowing where it's from, or at least the custom content creator that made it because I'm so familiar with the sets I have downloaded. All the counters and shelving are from Pierre Sims Domaine du Claw. These shelves are some of my favorites because while they're very simple, they're shallower than most shelves and look good placed anywhere, even in small bathrooms and bedrooms. As you can see, I was getting very excited by all the kitchen items included in the pantry party set and wanted to use them all. This set would be great for building a grocery store or corner deli because of all the different cereal boxes, jars, and cans, and the different sizes and swatches they come in. My favorite item has to be the case of water though. The default swatch is clearly modeled after Evian, but there's also Coke packaging and Perrier and so many more brands. It's a small detail, but I get hype for shit like that. For the bedroom, I started off by picking this beautiful springy wallpaper from Felix Andre's Chateau set. I've never used this wallpaper with the painted birds and bushes, but it felt very appropriate for the single grandma I imagined lives here. It's a very busy print though, so I made it an accent wall, and for the other walls in the room, I went with a plain white wallpaper with sideboards from Domaine du Claw. The bedside tables are from the base game, and if you look closely, they are worn, and paint is chipping around the edges, which is perfect for imagining the sim living here has had this furniture for most of their adult life. The bedroom is rather small, which is fine because they don't spend much time in here anyway. I gave them a small dresser with carved birds and twigs to match the spring theme. The dresser is from Felix Andre and Hey Harry's Tiny Twavelas. On top of the dresser is a retro TV from my Shuno Sun, which I'm sure they rarely use, but it's still nice to have. The antique full-length mirror by the bed is from Joyce's Fox, and then I just add a little radiator by the window. I don't think it's functional, but I wouldn't know either way because I don't have the season's EP. I could have left the bedroom as is, and it would have been totally fine. But just to add a little more storage in here, I put a wooden bench at the foot of the bed with some blankets on it and tucked a little folded blanket underneath it. I also add an acoustic guitar in here for some skill building, but if I had the Nifty Knitting Game Pack, or is it a stuff pack? Either way, if I had Nifty Knitting, I would have absolutely created a hobby room for this sim and put like a basket of yarn in the living room or something. Of course, the spring cottage in full bloom wouldn't be complete without several gardening pots out front. While playtesting this build, I also planted various vegetables, herbs, and flowers in these pots so they're already started for you. And last, but certainly not least, we have the bathroom. 
I was so relieved I had ample space to work with for this bathroom. I love large bathrooms, and while your sims only need a toilet, sink, and shower, and do not care about the design of it all, tiny bathrooms make me sad. I went with some wallpaper from Beery Sims combo set. It's got a very dated feel to it. Originally, all of the plumbing was from Hey Harry's Coastal Collection, but I switched out the tub for a more statement piece from 6MCC's Boho bathroom set. I keep it pretty simple in here, just a small picture on the wall and a narrow ladder shelf to put all your bathroom necessities like soap and extra towels and then i just go back throughout the house and add light switches to every room this is a detail i don't normally care to do but i don't know what compelled me to do it in this build they're not functional of course but most of the stuff in this house isn't it's all for the vibes last step is to add terrain paint on the exterior to really make the landscaping pop and then it's on to screenshots if you would like to download this build, it's up on the Sims 4 gallery. My EA ID is profwomanchild, P-R-O-F, womanchild, or you can find it by searching the hashtag professionalwomanchild or hashtag the crimson shade. Make sure you toggle the include custom content button on the left side panel, otherwise it won't pop up. But all of this info is copied in the description box below, as well as a majority of the CC I use for your convenience. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more speed builds in the Sims 4. And I will talk to you all in the next one. Enjoy the screenshots.